Alright, so this week's episode of Willow Creek Reimagined is a little different. So I'm doing the Umbrage Manor, and normally, as you'll see, I do the inside, I renovate it. Here I'm kind of deleting it because I tried. I tried, but this, whatever shape this you want to call this, it sucks. It makes sense. Where the bottom first floor, the way I did it, where I had everything all opened. But it makes no sense when you have to add bedrooms on the top floor. There are too many curves. There, it just, it didn't work. So I decided to just demolish it all and build a new house. I kind of still wanted to keep the vibe of like a mansion in this area, so this one's a little bit expensive. Because this is like the second big area and there's a lot, like, you have the Victorian house and the farmhouse across the street from them. And so, I kind of went with like, a little bit of a Mediterranean theme outside. At least, that's what the style of the house is, it doesn't really feel that, like look that way in the end. But it's really nice, and you're gonna see like it's a really weird big shape, and there's a lot of opened empty spaces, which I think add to the feeling of the grandeur. Because when you walk into that big house, it is supposed to look and feel ginormous, which this one definitely does. And I will say, like one of my main struggles when doing the outside of this house was just the color scheme so you're gonna see the that i'm first doing like the red brick because the picture i was looking at for inspiration was a red and white house with red brick and white paneling in areas and white accents and my problem was that all the lot they have a lot of brick choices in the sims 4 but when it comes to red brick and you can even see it perfectly here the patterns of the brick don't match and i really didn't want to i already spent like this is condensed down and i already spent like 10 minutes playing with the bricks and i just was like no more no more and I was but you guys are seeing like how I build and stuff and what I do is I always start with like the general outline of the house so I can always make that bigger or smaller based on what I feel like and I can demolish and then once the generic shape is done I try to play with the inside just to see if everything I want to fit on a floor fits and is a reasonable shape and so like right now outlining like you know bathrooms dining room um right now i'm outlining all the bedrooms in the bathrooms because there's a, a three bedroom four bath house. like i'm outlining the master right now because i wanted it to be giant i'm outlining the top floor like for the rec area so there's just little things i was trying to do just to make sure everything fit and it was a reasonable amount where I could fit the simulator furniture in. So that's my thought process and then once I feel like that's good I move on to the roof so everything is set. In a way, I mean, not necessarily though because you can always change it. Try to play with the roof to get the shape. And I want, so it doesn't look awkward and I don't write away play with the color of the roof. Because that I know can come later. I'd rather see how it looks shape wise first. Just to make sure that it all works out. And then play with that. And I like to try to my best to blend into each other the best I can. Like you'll see right here, I'm trying to blend in the two roofs so it looks seamless. And it comes together when you have the dormers pop them out. I will say that this didn't really, I feel like, turn out Mediterranean for me, but, like, it more turned out to be, um, 
not modern, but like more classical. And it's that like American classical in its style of build. So that was interesting. I'm trying to put the roof back here. You know, I'm like, I know no one's gonna really see them because when you play these in the game, you don't want to put them with the roof on. But I do my best. And then this is where I start playing with feathers. Yeah. This is what's going on right now. So now that I'm playing with the dormers and everything, I'm gonna you're gonna see play with the house colors and as I said earlier, there's no real match for the brick. Which is annoying and crazy to think about that red brick, there are so many variations, but they can't do it throughout. You can see, like, it's kind of crazy. I can see the top part of the, the stairs. Not matching the stairs, not matching the foundation. So, what's odd, though, is that the gray... While a little bit off is a whole lot closer than the red, which to me was just crazy. So I decided to turn the whole house gray instead. And I actually think it gave it a more like classy feel. So I always do this. I'm always checking to see how it looks. And I, I liked it, so I kept it. And I was like, it, also, like, not even classy. I feel like it's more historical. I don't know. That's my thought. <laughs> and then I was keeping up with the white in the windows just to give it that little bit of pop. So we're still like adding those in because the white needs to pop and those white windows will help that. And then I'm adding light to the dormer so that there's light coming into the house in those areas. Which would be like the general like active area that I'll just see me make. And then the <laughs> bathroom upstairs. Yep. And then I did a backyard. And then you'll see me just start going through items. Because I want to start from the inside and I'm playing. I'm gonna make it all pretty. Lights, make it all nice, and then I know I went for like the big modern windows in the back. So I don't necessarily go with the white idea, but I figured to me outside that's an extension because a lot of historical houses don't have like a deck like that. So to have that modern window light coming in makes complete sense because. I know if I was redoing a house and I was adding the deck, I'd probably change some of the windows as well. So that's why I, I did I did it with those lights. And then you're gonna see I'm gonna start going through all my items. These are all the items I had in the old house, and I am gonna use them because why waste? Why waste? That is my motto. I will say though, I wish EA would make it a little bit more realistic with the overlaps and things. Um, where you know, we could have like the use for walk-in closets because I, I would love that. And I think it'd be really cute. And it'd be fun because I'm. I know I'm not the only person who makes like 10 outfits for my sim. It would be kind of cute to see them like maybe hanging up and having them shoot. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being crazy. So I'm doing the kitchen again. With a nice fun color to give it some pop. Because when you have like these big areas, you need to really do something distinct 
to separate that as a barrier. So I figured you do that with color and furniture. That's what I was doing with substance, but I was using the color. So you're gonna notice the living room is a lot cooler than the kitchen. And the dining room is kind of a mix of the two. And adding the plants and I will plants and everything, my little direct decorations. So that's really nice. Then I figured I would do the side counter going at an angle to get that clear separation between the kitchen and the dining room. Lights. I know they're not the two dollar ones, the saucers, but I was just using what I had. So I'm always checking stuff out. I am crazy when it comes to this. And then right now what I'm really just doing is just seeing what I have and where it can be used. That is literally, literally what I am doing. Go, go see <laughs> randomly placing furniture. Much if you're watching another speed builds, not really something I do. But in this instance, I had already started designing the old manor before I gave up and decided to destroy it and do this. So I was like, why am I going to get rid of the furniture? I can just reuse it. So that's what I was doing in this instance. And then, with the four of us, my goal is to try to do as much base game as possible. A lot of the, I think I only did cats and dogs and seasons, obviously. Because I see there's a point in where I realize, oh, darn, I have stuff on other packs that I don't really want to use. Like, I have the planners and some decorations from, um, Eco living my fireplace is from get together. I'm like, if I'm only gonna use one item, it's not worth it. So I was just like getting rid of that. But a lot of like, if it comes up with another pack that's not base cats and dogs and seasons, it's probably because I stupidly didn't realize that during this instance I'm taking everything away, and I just left that item out. Which was just like a one-off. So don't worry about it because it's probably it's more likely a decor not more likely, it is a decoration and not a piece of furniture. So it's not something to be like, oh no, I'm gonna have like an Ethereum. No, we'll probably have like a picture mixing. So like You look in that in the kitchen you'll probably have the uh, food missing just like the treats I also realized that I was doing a lot of dark colors so I needed to lighten them up in some way so that's why I played with the rugs and, and such at least in the um dining room guy we can see up the butler statue Let's see, starting to fully get into that crazy build mode. Right now, you're re I'm realizing, oh no, the walls are really too high for this to be justified. Which ridiculous. I'm gonna fix it. <laughs> see, even later on, I make changes, little changes, and that's completely okay. The whole point of building is until you perfect the first time around. It's really to have fun. And to really use your spatial reasoning to think about stuff. And that's really what I like about it. Is that you're using reason and logic. You're using math. I'm a teacher and I even tell my kids like I build in the sims. And I will use area and perimeter to help me figure out how to design these houses. Sometimes when I'm doing like a free build. Or when I'm thinking about the rooms. I'm like okay. You know, bed is normally three by two. I need to make sure I have at least three by three, so or four by three, so my sims can get around and maneuver. So, yeah, 
I like I like this aspect of the Sims. If you have anything. And then you also get to be creative with the designs. I know the base game may not seem like it has a has a lot of options, but you get to be creative, you get to do things in the way you want to. Which I think is always fun. You know, you get to be creative. I will say that this is the one house where I really didn't add any pictures for once, or portraits. So you're not going to see a lot of stuff adorning the walls, which is very not me. But I wanted to keep this minimalist because it was so grand. Which I know sounds crazy. But it's because there's so much going on and there's so much space. I didn't want to adorn it with too many pictures. And you're going to see I'm doing like the final touches right now. And I'm adding a table. I'm just adding some knickknacks here and there. Like I forgot to put a paper. Which is crazy. I, this is the part where I realized I had the stairs going wrong, the wrong way. So the Sims would only be able to stand at the top of it and not access. The um, upstairs floor, the second floor at all. That was interesting. So, and then I'm just doing the wall. See, simple colors. Having fun with it. Making sure it's also bright because you don't want to choose too dark of colors that they're darkening the house. And then I really went simple with the landscape because you look around it, their backyard is very mirrored because they have a little park back there. So yeah, this is the new Umbridge Man, or Umbridge. It is on my gallery and I know it's a little bit expensive at 180, but I hope you like it.